Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on creating a nighttime view in Rhino 7. We're going to be creating a nighttime render using Rhino 7's built-in render engine that looks something along the lines of this preview here. Now to do this I've created a simple architectural model and we've added some basic textures to the ground and also to the building itself. And if I just go to the render preview option we can have a look at what that currently looks like. So here you can see the basic textures on that model and we've also got this green glass window here which we'll be using later on as well. Now the first thing we need to do when setting up a nighttime scene is to get the lighting to reflect that sort of night atmosphere. Currently at the moment we just have a skylight set up and we've got this sort of strong white lighting lighting up our model. So the first thing we need to do is to change that. And to do that, we're going to be using something called an HDRI, which allows us to input a photograph of a nighttime scene into our model and allow that photograph to light up our scene for us. Now, in order to get or acquire an HDRI, you can download them online. And a good resource for them is this website called HDRI Haven. I'll put a link in the description of this video to this website, to the specific HDRI I'm going to use. If we go to HDRIs here, to night, and we're going to use this nighttime view here. You can download lots of different sizes of HDRIs of that image for free. Um, for this, I'm just using the 2K version, which stands for 2000 pixels wide. Um, you don't need to go bigger than 4K, I'd say, unless you want a really sort of high resolution render. Um, but I'd, I'd have around 2K, 4K, because otherwise your file size is going to get really large. So once you've downloaded that, we're going to go back to our model and we're going to input that into our lighting for our scene. And to do that, we need to go to Render, Render Properties. Make sure you're using Rhino's built-in render and not the legacy version. If you're in Rhino 7, you want the newer version, which is this one here. And we're going to scroll down to Lighting. Now, because we're doing a nighttime scene, we don't need the sun turned on, so we can keep that turned off. And we're just going to look at this skylight option. Now at the moment it's using the studio skylight which is what's making that kind of white light around our model. We need to switch this to our new nighttime view. So to do that we're going to hit on the pencil tool to edit it and we're going to change the background image on this sort of studio lighting. So at the moment it's Rhino Studio but if I click on these three dots here and we select our new HDRI we've dropped in, it will then load in that image for us. Now it will come up with this little box here in which we can edit and tweak some of those settings. For now don't worry about these too much, this allows us to tweak the positioning or the intensity of that HDRI, um, but for now I'm just going to hit OK and that's fine. The projection will also be automatically applied if you're using a spherical HDRI like this and it will be applied as if it was a kind of globe around your whole model. So we can hit OK to that as well. And now you'll see it's updated all the locations where it's using that studio lighting. So we have the skylight with that lighting on now. We have our custom environment for reflection. So all our windows and glass will kind of reflect that environment, which is what we want as well. And then also for the backdrop, we're going to put it on this 360 environment. So it uses that same image for the background too. Now, once that's all set, we're going to hit OK. And we're going to have a look and see what effect that's done. So there you can see now that it's essentially dropped that image in the background and it's now using it to light our whole scene and our whole view has got slightly darker. So let's do another render preview to have a look at that. And there you can see now it's rendered out. We've got a lot darker tones in the image but we've also got this kind of blurry background here of our HDRI. Now when you use these I usually sort of never use the image as the actual background I want. I'll always replace this background because as you can see it looks a bit blurry, it doesn't really match the photo. All we really want the HDRI for is for the reflections and for the lighting in the scene. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to switch out this background for a different image. Now you can do it in the render settings but I prefer just creating a physical plane and applying a texture to that plane. And what I've done is I've just gone online, just Googled nighttime texture, and we've got this kind of starry night texture here. So all I'm going to do is let's just minimize that. We're going to draw out a plane, and I'm going to create another perspective viewport here, which will allow us to kind of work in this simultaneously to having our view open. So let's draw out just 
a vertical surface behind our model. Now the back is here. Make it sort of rectangular there. And you might need to make it quite large depending on sort of how big your scene is. So that should do for now. So that's the kind of background of our model there. And you can see it in the view. And all I'm going to do is make a new texture. We're going to make a physically based texture for this. This is just going to be called sky. There. And then we're going to apply that image I found to that sky texture. So I'm going to go to detailed settings, base color, and assign a texture. And we're going to apply that starry night sky image to it. So essentially it's just a texture of that image. Now the reason I'm making it as a texture is because we're also going to make this kind of light up and give it some emission later on. So for now we'll just add that in and then once you've got it we'll assign it to the object and you can see it here. And what I can do is I'm going to just move it down so I get those kind of mountains in the background of the view. Oops. And then we're just going to move it back into place there like so. And then let's do another test render to have a look at that and see how it's going. Make sure when you're testing, always test in the right view as well. And there you can see that's got a kind of nicer backdrop on that scene now. So the next thing is it's still looking a bit bright so it's time to now tweak the lighting to get it really matching that kind of nighttime atmospherics and you might need to kind of darken up that environmental light you have in order to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our render properties. We're going to scroll down to our lighting and under this intensity option here we're just going to lower that intensity down and I'm going to set it to a 0.5 for now so it's sort of at a half intensity there. Hit OK and you'll see that the whole image gets slightly darker and then if we try a render preview again and I'm just going to slightly tweak the camera angle there so we get a bit more sky in. There we go. So there we're getting a slightly kind of darker view, which is what I want. I want it to sort of seem quite kind of nighttime and dark. Obviously you don't want it to be fully pitch black because then you're not going to see anything. So it's trying to find that fine line between darkening the image but still being able to see the elements you want. So I think I'm quite happy with that there. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add a bit of kind of foggy sort of atmospheric to the image and to do that I'm going to use one of Rhino's post effects. If we click on the plus here we can add in a fog. Now by default it's just going to add in a grey fog but I want this to sort of match the tones of the night image that I'm doing. So I'm going to just give it a sort of dark blue tone. Somewhere around there I think should be good. And because I'm working in millimetres the distances are going to have to be a lot larger so we're going to do start distance at 10,000 millimetres which is 10 metres and then we're going to do the end distance at 200,000 millimetres, which is 200 metres. You can see that. And now we've got this kind of nice blue fog working in the image. Once you've set the distance, I'm also going to then lower the strength down. So it's just a little kind of haze. And you just want it to apply a little bit of background haze to the image there. And it just gives a bit of depth to that image and just helps kind of get that atmosphere across. And you can lower it down. It doesn't have to be too strong there. Sometimes adding this in quite a subtle way is better than having it too strong. So we've set the fog and now I'm just going to try and brighten up those stars in the background. And to do that and the reason we made this sky a texture is we can apply an emission to that so we can let the kind of image brighten itself up. So I'm just going to close this preview and we're going to save these post effects so the fog stays on and we'll have it the next time we load up the render. And we're going to go back to the sky and we're going to go to detailed settings again, open up the emissions box and I'm going to just copy this image that I put in for my base colour and we're going to paste it into the emissions colour there. And what that would do is if we then load up another render preview, it will just brighten up that background image slightly. And you can see there that all the kind of lighter points in the image have got a slight kind of glowy effect to them. And that's all we're doing is we're just using this emissions texture 
to essentially let the texture light itself up to give us some of that kind of sparkly starry night sky we have. So at the moment I'm pretty happy with the atmospherics in the image. We've got the background looking nice, we've set up a bit of fog and we've got some overall lighting. The last part of this is I want to add in some artificial lighting inside the building to make it look like the kind of scene is being lit up and there's activity happening inside. So in order to do that what we're going to do is we're going to use some artificial lights in Rhino and you can find these up here in this kind of lighting tool here and we're going to just drop them down and the one I'm going to use is the rectangular light. This is the most straightforward one. All you have to do is if we click on this, essentially it just asks you to create a rectangle, which will be a light. I usually do this sort of, I know I want it a vertical light, so I'm going to create this in the front view here and we're just going to draw it out. That's quite a sort of simple shape there, like so. And you can see once it's in the scene, it's starting to light things up there. Now, all we're going to do is we're going to just move this into the building and a good way to do this is set one of your views to a top view and we can have a look at it here and I'm just going to move it to the very back make sure you keep it selected and then I'm going to rotate it round so we want it at the back of the building facing outwards like so and once it's in we're just then going to move it down so it's not poking out the top so it's fully in there. Now lighting, usually the best sort of technique with lighting is to keep it simple. For this I'm just going to keep it with this single light and I'm not going to add in lots of different lights and you'll find that it's a lot easier to work with kind of one or two simple lights rather than loads of little ones all over the place. So we'll try it with this single plane light there. And if we go to properties we can have a look at some of these property settings as well. Um, what I usually quite like to do for artificial lights is just make the colour a slightly off-white, like an orangey white there, to give it a bit of warmth. You can keep it quite oops, quite light, but just try and make it slightly off-white, and then you can play around with the intensity here as well. So let's put it on a 1 for now, and we'll do a preview to have a look and see how that's looking. So there you go, you can see it's lit up the inside of that building there. Now, the issue with this is because we've got sort of no activity here and the glass is very clear, we can see a lot of things happening. It looks a bit strange at the moment. And one thing I quite like to do in a good way to sort of create a bit of ambiguity to your images, but also sort of blur that lighting slightly, is to just sort of blur the glass so it's not as sort of clear through and just give it a bit of texture. To do that, I'll usually go back to my materials, find my glass material, and in this roughness option, we're just going to drop a texture into that to create a little bit of diffusion in our glass. And what this would do is I'm going to load a texture in where it says assign texture, and we'll drop in just this kind of abstract texture I've got here, which is sort of a patch. You could use a concrete texture for this, anything that's quite abstract and patchy. And you'll see there that that's now inputted into the roughness value. And then what we do if we re render that, and have a look at it. What this would do is slightly blur the light behind it, as you can see here. So it's now looking a lot more diffused and we can't really clearly see what's happening behind that glass. And it's just a really good way of kind of giving a bit of diffusion to the light you're making and also some ambiguity of what's happening behind there. So it's quite a kind of easy trick that to just creating a bit of diffusion in your light. Um, once you've done that, we can also play around with the intensity if you want it a bit brighter. Let's up it to a 3 and render that out and see how that looks. A lot of times you just have to test to see which one, if it's too bright or too dark. See, that's kind of too bright now. So I'm going to lower it back down, probably to a 1.5, I think. You can never really see in the preview here what it looks like, so it's always good to just render preview. To make sure that it's looking nice before you finish it. So yeah I think a 1.5 is nice there for that and you can see we've got a kind of nice glow to the building now. Now for a final thing I'm just going to add in a few characters and people into this building to make it look like there's a bit of atmosphere and movement in there. To do this we're going to do this in the most simple way. All we're going to do is we're going to create a box or a plane that is about a person's height 
Um, so we're just going to go vertical plane here. I'm just going to draw it out here. We're going to make it sort of about a meter wide and 2.1 meters height. There we go. So that's going to be our person. And then we're going to make a new material here. Make it physically based again. And all I've done is I've just gone on the internet and I've found this kind of cut out person. This is a PNG image and this is important that it's a PNG um, because what this means is it will have no background. It will essentially cut the person out for you. So what you can do is if you go to your physically based material here, we go to detailed settings, open up the base color options and assign a texture to the base color and assign my person there. What that would do is it will automatically cut that person out of the texture and you can see it if we drop this on rendered and then we have assigned that to the object. Oops. You can see that that she's already been cut out of the image because it's a PNG image there. I'll just make it a bit wider so it looks in proportion and there we have our figure. Now it doesn't matter that she's only 2D because all we're going to use her for is to create a silhouette of a person inside this building. So what we're then going to do is I'm going to find, let's move this object slightly closer and we're going to isolate out some of the floors in here. So we've got kind of this floor and this floor here. There we go and we'll select my person as well. And once we've selected the two floors and the figure I'm just going to isolate those objects like so. And all we're going to do is I'm just going to copy this person a few times up on these floors, just keeping it quite kind of a random spread. Because we want to sort of make it look like there's sort of a crowd of people up here in this building. Now, once you've copied it a few times, make sure you've deleted the floating ones. And you can always sort of move them about a bit once you've got them. It's nice to have a bit of sort of distance and depth in them so you've got some really close to the front some really close to the back and this will kind of be visible through that glass because we've got a slightly sort of diffused glass look the ones closer up will be sharper in focus and the ones further back will be less so and I'll copy this around and if we look at rendered view quickly you can see there we've got all our figures kind of standing on our platform so once we've done that, we can delete our original one, select these and unisolate our objects. So we're back to our main view. I'm going to just copy these down so we've got some on the bottom layer as well. Let's just deselect these ones and we'll just copy these ones downwards. So we've got them at the bottom of our scene too. So there you go, you can see in the little preview there are all our little people. And now what this would do is if we render this out for a final time, you can now see we've got our kind of vague shapes of people up in that building there, giving us a nice little bit of sort of atmosphere in that building and some kind of animation to those floors to make it look like there are people inside enjoying themselves. So as a final thing, let's just render out a high quality version of this image. And we're gonna set it to, let's set it to kind of 1,300 pixels wide, which is like relatively high quality. That's about just smaller than monitor size. And I'll put it to final quality. And we'll have a look at what this looks like when rendered out at the sharp quality. So we're just gonna to go to render and instead of render preview, I'm just gonna click on render this time. And there we can see the high quality versions now rendered out and you can see now that kind of roughness map on the window and what it's doing to diffuse the lighting behind and also the shadows of the people in there. So that was it. That's the end of a kind of quick video tutorial on how to create a nighttime view in Rhino 7. I'll also be doing one of these tutorials on creating the same kind of image but using V-Ray for Rhino instead of Rhino's built-in renderer for those of you who are using V-Ray as well. So thank you for watching and if you're interested in other videos like this please have a look on the channel for more tutorial videos such as these.